Welcome to Lesson 2 in Unit 21, From Sun to Food. In our last lesson, students identified patterns of what living things need or do, and they defined matter and energy. In this lesson, they will begin to investigate how plants obtain matter, also known as mass, through a spreader demonstration. Students will predict the source of new mass in plants and then perform an experiment to try and answer this question. A seed sprouter with four kinds of seeds will be observed for five days, then the data from this experiment will be analyzed. Students figure out that plants gain mass in the form of matter without soil. This lesson will take about two days while monitoring time continues throughout the week. Teachers, don't forget, the bean experiment that was set up during lesson one will still continue. Students will observe bean growth every two days for a couple weeks from here onward. While the beans are growing, you will continue teaching your MySci lessons. As the beans grow, tell students that to measure root length and stem length, students can use a piece of string to trace the length of the root and then straighten out the string to measure its total length. Be sure to keep an eye on the sprouts to make sure they don't dry out. Add a small amount of water to the bags if they seem dry. Refer to the bean setup directions for more information. Review and check for understanding of controlled variable, dependent variable, fair test, and independent variable by reviewing student data collection sheets. This will be used again in Lesson 3. For Lesson 2, a seed sprouter will be used to show growth of various seeds. You will need to read the Sprouter setup and maintenance instructions on teacher page 4 ahead of time to prepare for this lesson. It is best to start your sprouter on a Monday. By Friday, all the seeds should be well sprouted and students can examine the sprouts closely. After six or seven days, the sprouts are likely to begin molding. If you have more than one section of science students, you should have materials to complete this experiment with each section concurrently. Check the consumables boxes you should have received to find materials for your additional sections. This is a great opportunity for your classes to compare their data to the other sections that you teach. After you get your experiments set up and the routine you would like to use for your data collection, you can start another lesson and collect data at the beginning portion of your lesson. In the Engage portion of this lesson, students will consider which is heavier, a tomato seed or a tomato plant, then determine where new mass of the plant came from. Have students complete the tomato writing prompt on student page 5. After students have had a chance to record their ideas, they should discuss their ideas with a partner or small group, then share out loud as a class. At this point, students will probably mention soil as an important need for plants. The sprouter experiment that will be set up in the Explore will test if the mass in plants comes from the soil or elsewhere. 
Students will revisit this page after data is collected in this lesson to see if the results changed their minds. In the Explore portion of this lesson, the seed spreader will be set up after students make predictions about how the seeds will grow. Refer to teacher page four for setup directions before you intend to start this lesson. On the day of this lesson, put students into six groups and give each group a sample of each kind of bean or seed. My site provides four types, mung beans, lentils, alfalfa, and garbanzo beans. Each group should discuss similarities and differences between the beans and seeds in their small group before sharing out. They should take notes in their science journals, including a sketch of each kind of bean or seed on student page 6 in the day 1 box. If you have not taught how to find the mass yet, you can do so prior to or during this investigation. Mass is measured in grams. Also, if you have not explained how to collect data prior to this lesson, now is the time to do so. Ask students to use the Sprouter data collection and the Sprouter observation sheets on student pages 6 and 7 to make predictions about the beans and seeds. If the students are stuck on what kind of predictions to make, you can start them off with the question, will the beans and seeds gain mass without soil? Encourage them to make additional predictions as well. Examples include, which seed will sprout first? What do you think they will look like on day two? What about day five? What will come out of the seed first, roots or leaves? What will the roots look like, and how fast will they grow? Record some of their predictions on chart paper as well. By this point, you should have already prepared the seed sprouters for each of your class sections ahead of time. As you are setting up the experiment, lead students to discuss why each piece of data is important. In the explain portion of this lesson, students will decide how to find the weight of the dry seeds, then the weight of the wet seeds. Help them work through how to get the best measurements as they record their data on the Sprouter investigation sheet. To find the weight of the dry seeds, use the weight of dry seeds in the tray minus the weight of the tray only. To find the weight of the wet seeds, use the weight of the wet seeds in the tray minus the weight of the tray only. To find the weight of the water, two measurement methods can be employed. Use the weight of the wet seeds in the tray minus the weight of the dry seeds in the tray, or use the weight of the wet seeds minus the weight of the dry seeds. Work through these calculations for each tray. You may want to chart student responses to the prompt, what does the tray and seeds after rinsed and drained data point tell us? Students may realize that it tells us that the water does not perfectly drain out of the system, so it is adding some mass to the system. It is helping us account for experimental error because it's not actually causing the seeds to gain mass. After this discussion, you should collect student journals, or remind students that they will need them each day for the next several days to record their observations. You may wish to replicate the Sprouter data collection sheet found on student page six on a large piece of chart paper or electronically so that you can model the data recording process for your students. Be sure that students are recording their observations of the seeds in each tray as well as the data from weighing the trays. They can draw simple pictures or take notes on student page 7 of their science journals. Each day, Follow steps 12 through 17 on the Sprouter Setup and Maintenance Instructions found on Teacher page 4 and record the data. Discuss what the data could mean. Final conclusions can be made after five days of data collection. Note that you are taking the mass of the seeds before rinsing them with water on each day so that you can truly tell how much mass the seeds are gaining. After each day of taking the mass, which will likely only take about 10 minutes or less of class time, you could have students then research the types of seeds and any questions that they have about this food that they are growing. Students may or may not know what alfalfa, garbanzos, or lentils are and how they are used by people. 
They could read nonfiction texts about agriculture careers or could create or read about recipes for the seeds they are growing. Refer to the lesson plans in the curriculum document for the link to My American Farm and a New ZLA article text set on agriculture experiments. In addition, you can show the videos in the extend portion of this lesson and discuss what students are seeing. Here's a photo of the seed sprouter after a week of following the rinsing and draining procedure explained in the directions. If you are having trouble getting the seeds to sprout, refer to the sprouter directions found on teacher page 4 for troubleshooting. Remember, it is best to start the sprouters on a Monday. By Friday, all the seeds should be well sprouted and students can examine the sprouts closely. After six or seven days, the sprouts are likely to begin molding. The contents of the sprouter can then be discarded and the plastic of the containers can be recycled when this lesson concludes. In the elaborate portion of this lesson, students will observe the sprouts and analyze the data. After five days of observation, student pages six and seven of their science journals should be filled in. Students will analyze the data by calculating total mass change, which is day five minus day one. After students calculate total mass change for each of the seed types, allow them to work in groups to answer the analysis questions after the data table. Students should look for patterns in the data and think about what causes plants to gain matter, also known as mass. If they aren't noticing the patterns, this is okay at this point as students will further develop this idea later in the unit. Students should be encouraged to use evidence to back up claims that they make. Consider using the talk moves as students share out their analysis to the whole class. Refer to the lesson plans in the curriculum for more information. Next, have students revisit their pizza farm model. Have them work to revise their model according to what they have learned in this lesson. For example, if students drew arrows from soil to plants, they should now omit those arrows. If students are still struggling with the idea that soil gives plants most of their matter, ask them, what evidence did you see from our sprouter so far that might make you think differently? In the evaluate portion of this lesson, have students revisit the tomato writing prompt to see how their thinking has changed or deepened. They should answer the part about how the seed sprouter investigation has changed their thinking about what plants need to grow by using specific evidence. Teachers, don't forget to revisit the bean experiment that was set up back on day one. Students will continue to observe bean growth every two days for a couple of weeks from here onward. While the beans are growing, you will continue teaching my Sci lessons. As the beans grow, tell students that to measure root length and stem length, students can use a piece of string to trace the length of the root and then straighten out the string to measure the total length. Be sure to keep an eye on the sprouts to make sure that they don't dry out. Add a small amount of water to the bags if they seem dry. This will be used again in Lesson 3. The videos in the extend portion of this lesson can be viewed to investigate how hydroponic agriculture is more efficient than growing plants in soil. Pause this PD video now to watch the aquaponics and vertical farm videos. These would be great to view during the explain portion of this lesson on the days when students are recording plant growth data, which only takes about 10 minutes of class time. In this lesson, students predicted the source of new mass in plants and then performed an experiment to try to answer this question. A seed sprouter with four kinds of seeds was observed for five days, then the data from this experiment was analyzed. Students figured out that plants gain mass, also known as matter, without soil. This will set the stage for future lessons where they will design more in-depth experiments to see how plants get energy and matter for growth and survival.